1,700 years ago, the Cao Wei Empire was in crisis. The struggle for power at court spelled danger for the country's scholars. For one small group of men, safety would be found in seclusion. But why did they turn their backs on Confucianism? This is the story of the seven sages of the bamboo grove. The Annals of Xiao Wu County relates an episode involving a visit to the area by the Qing Emperor Qianlong. The Emperor came to Xiao Wu, which is in Hunan Province, in the year 1750 when he was 40 years old. Learning that Xiao Wu was the place where the legendary Seven Sages of the Bamboo Grove used to meet, the emperor was moved to write a poem. But what was it about these seven scholars that was so admired by a man who usually had little interest in anyone except himself? The seven sages of the bamboo grove were scholars and musicians who always chose as their meeting place a bamboo grove. They were Ji Kang, Ruanji, Shan Tao, Xiang Xiao, Liu Ling, Ruan Xian, and Wang Rong. In the Wei time, these people are not 不满意当时虚的领教追求真实的情感追求个性解放个性独立从他们的身上人们看到了当时时代那种率真的和超脱的人格所以令后人尊敬和敬仰the seven sages of the bamboo grove lived in the latter years of the Three Kingdoms period and the early part of the Jin dynasty. Their fame began to spread after the fall of the Eastern Jin dynasty in the year 420. Over the following centuries, they developed into a collective symbol of scholarly ideals. But why did they choose to spend their time in a bamboo grove? The reason is in part associated with events in the latter years of the Han Dynasty in the late 2nd and early 3rd century. The warlord Cao Cao usurped power by holding the emperor hostage and acting in his name. In the course of 20 years of fighting, he succeeded in bringing northern China under his control and created the foundations for the rise to power of the Cao Wei Empire. In the year 220, Cao Cao died of illness in Luoyang. In October of the same year, Cao Pi, Cao Cao's son, forced Emperor Xian Di of the Eastern Han to abdicate in his favor. Cao Pi founded a new dynasty known as Cao Wei, but after just six years as emperor, in the year 226 he died. On his deathbed, 
He entrusted his son and heir, Cao Rui, to the care of the Imperial Chancellor, Sima Yi, and the Supreme General, Cao Zhen. Sima Yi was born to a rich family in Wenxian County, Hunan Province, in the year 179. Sima Yi distinguished himself as commander of the capital, defending it from Shu forces, while Cao Pi was campaigning against Wu in the east. He was subsequently promoted to a succession of key positions in the Cao Wei administration. The novel The Romance of the Three Kingdoms describes his exploits in detail. Cao Rui died in the year 239. He was succeeded by his eight-year-old son, Cao Fang, with Sima Yi and Cao Zhen's son, Cao Shuang, declared regents. Uh,但是随着这个政治斗争的激烈,呃,曹爽就让当时的皇帝曹爽降职,呃,让这个司马懿担任一个不具有实权的一个太傅,架空了他的权利。But Sima Yi, a supporter of three generations of the Cao family, was wiser and more popular than Zhuang Shuang. As a ruse designed to lull Cao Shuang into a false sense of security, he pretended to be ill. The uncertain political situation made things dangerous for everyone. The country's scholars in particular felt under threat and many of them decided to go into hiding. Forests became popular places of refuge. Amid all the political instability, the Taoist philosophy expounded by Laozi and Zhuangzi gained in popularity. Scholars, especially those involved in politics, were often the victims of the political struggles that marked the end of the Three Kingdoms period. Because of this, they were drawn to the Taoist concept of returning to nature. Seventeen hundred years ago, the Cao Wei Empire was in crisis. The struggle for power at court spelled danger for the country's scholars. For one small group of men, safety would be found in seclusion. But why did they turn their backs on Confucianism? This is the story of the seven sages of the bamboo grove. The renowned early 20th century educator Tsai Yuanpei concluded that the thinkers of the Three Kingdoms and early Jin periods found unnatural avenue of escape in the teachings of Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi. Influenced by Taoism, scholars chose a simple rustic existence in which they enjoyed wine and music and discussed only issues that were not politically sensitive. What is Qingtan? Qingtan is... 不着边际的一些议论这个明理之谈呢
，呃，所以能够避免受到当时一些政治上的一些这个纠纷和缠绕。The renowned 20th century scholar Li Niu Tang said, "In the latter years of the Three Kingdoms period and the early period of the Jin Dynasty, scholars could not discuss state affairs, so they became hedonistic. This is a natural social reaction when people are deprived of their basic rights." In the year 248, the last year of the Zheng Shi period of Emperor Cao Fang's reign. Two scholars, Ji Kang and Ruan Ji, began meeting regularly with five others in a bamboo grove in Shenyang in Henei Prefecture. These seven sages had turned their backs on official careers and had become adherents of Taoism. In the bamboo grove, they discussed non-political affairs such as the Tao, drank heavily. And led a simple and unconstrained existence. But what had led them to take this unconventional path in life? Ji Kang was one of the most prominent of the Seven Sages. He was born in the year 223. Also known as Shu Ye, Ji Kang was a native of Zhu County in Xiao Prefecture. Today, it is the county of Sushian in Anhui Province. Ji Kang's father died when he was still a child. He and his brother were raised by their mother. Ji Kang was remarkably tall and very handsome. By nature, he was honest and considerate. History 上记载，嵇康身长七尺八寸，啊，折算下来，现在不到两米。至少也有一米八九的样子，是，是堂堂一条汉子。历史上又记载他是龙章凤字啊。什么叫龙章凤字？就是我们所说的帝王像。At a time when great importance was ascribed to personal appearance, Ji Kang, with his distinguished looks and impressive bearing, was believed to be exceptionally talented. But he was blessed with more than good looks alone. He was also a noted scholar of philosophy, literature, and music. He was widely admired for his skill at playing the traditional Qin zither. Ji Kang was also a fine calligrapher and painter. The leading Tang Dynasty expert on calligraphy and art, Zhuang Huaiguan, was particularly impressed by Ji Kang's cursive writing. In his mid twenties, Ji Kang married Chang Le Ting, a princess from the Cao Imperial family. So now, some scholars say that Ji Kang was like. 呃，嵇康好像怎么跟曹家攀了这么亲戚？说有人就讲说，好像他是有点攀龙附凤的这个意思，那也很难讲，很难讲。你比如说，在一个一个很小的一个地方，呃，像嵇康这样杰出的人士，那我想，曹家要嫁出一个一个一个一个女呃女女孩子，那我想，首先找到的可能就是像嵇康这样的人，那很自然。Having become the husband of Princess Chang Le Ting, Ji Kang was appointed to an official position at court. As attendant counselor, he was well paid, but held no real power. His position at court was only titular. He knew, however, that being related by marriage to the rulers of Cao Wei made him a potential enemy of the powerful Sima family. He sensed that in the complex political climate, those who came to prominence exposed themselves to risk. It was far safer, he reasoned, to stay out of the public eye. An attractive option was to become a mountain hermit or a fisherman. This person is a 
不像不太想做官，所以他不愿意跟政治有多有过分的瓜葛，不太想介入政治，跟他的性情跟他的个性是有关系的。So Ji Kang left court and for twenty years lived at Shenyang in Hunan. Shenyang is in what is today Shouwu County in Hunan Province. The Yellow River is nearby to the south, and the Taihang Mountains are just to the north. The Mount Yuntai scenic area lies within Xiaowu County. It is the location of Baijia Cliff, where, at the bottom of a mountain path to the east of an ancient tower, there is a stretch of flat land, 30 meters wide and 100 meters long. The inscription on the tablet reveals that this was one of the sites where the seven sages of the bamboo grove met. Historians have also identified it as the site of Ji Kang's house. So, why did Ji Kang decide to live at Bai Jia Cliff? Yuntai is a picturesque mountain. Covering an area of 190 square kilometers, Ji Kang, being a nature lover, was no doubt attracted to such a beautiful spot. Another attraction of Mount Yuntai was its location, just 200 kilometers away from the Taowei capital at Luoyang. A post road ran between the mountain and the city, so news from court. Reached the mountain quite quickly, so Mount Yuntai offered a scholar seeking refuge from court both seclusion and ready access to news of important developments nationally. Like many other scholars of his day, Ji Kang was a passionate anti-Confucian, a strong supporter of the Taoism advocated by Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi. He called for the abandonment of the Confucian moral code in favor of something more natural. Even though Ji Kang lived in seclusion, his fame spread far and wide. Six other scholars, Ruan Ji, Chen Tao, Xiang Xiao, Liu Liang, Ruan Qian, and Wang Rong, were among those who sought him out on Mount Yuntai. There, these seven men would meet and talk in a bamboo grove. Seventeen hundred years ago, the Taowei Empire was in crisis. The struggle for power at court spelled danger for the country scholars. For one small group of men, safety would be found in seclusion. But why did they turn their backs on Confucianism? This is the story of the seven sages of the bamboo grove. Ruan Ji was, after Ji Kang, the most prominent among the seven sages of the bamboo grove. Ruan Ji was also known as Si Zong. He was born in 210 in Weishu County, Hunan. For many generations, Ruan Ji's family had been Confucians. His father, Ruan Yu, a famous poet and essayist and also a fine musician, was a leading literary figure at the end of the Han Dynasty, who served as an official under Cao Cao. 可惜的是，在阮籍三岁的时候，他父亲阮羽去世了。不过，呃，曹师傅的，尤其是曹丕，出于和他长期共事的情谊，对他们母子一直是啊关照，呃，很同情的。Coming from such a distinguished literary family, it was only to be expected that Ruan Ji should demonstrate a great talent for the arts. And according to history of the Jin Dynasty, Ruan Ji read widely and was especially fond of the writings of Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi. He drank a lot and could whistle very well. He was a fine performer on the guqin, often becoming so immersed in the music that he forgot himself. Ruan Ji was also a noted writer who excelled at composing poetry. Ruan Ji's fame brought him to the attention of many leading officials. In the year 242, in the early part of Cao Fang's reign over Cao Wei, Ruan Ji was approached by the Supreme General Jiang Ji, who had long admired him, and 
and wanted to make him his aide. Ranji wrote an article declining the general's request. In it, he stated, I am in poor health and incapable of fulfilling the duties. Eventually, though, under pressure from his family, he accepted the appointment. But it wasn't long before he resigned. In the eighth year of Cao Fang's reign, Ruanji accepted another appointment at court. Once again, though, he resigned, citing health problems. Soon afterwards, he was asked to join the staff of Supreme General Cao Shuang. According to the history of the Jin Dynasty, he declined it for health reasons and stayed out of government. However, his actions brought him to the attention of Sima Yi. Ruanji, having refused Cao Shuang's request, spent his time playing the guqin and singing. He went traveling, sometimes spending the entire night on a hillside. Eventually, Ruanji made the acquaintance of Ji Kang. He would later lament that he had not met him sooner. The two men began getting together in a bamboo grove. Another of the seven sages of the bamboo grove was Ruan Qian, who also went by the name Zhong Rong. He was also a highly accomplished musician who was well known for his unconventional behavior and attitudes. He was a fine exponent of the Chinese lute, which would be called the Ruan after him. Like his uncle Ruan Ji, Ruan Qian was resentful of the way he was treated by the world. The history of the Jin dynasty contains an interesting story about him. The Ruan clan lived on opposite sides, north and south, of a highway where it passed through Weishu County. With time, those living on the north side of the road prospered, while those on the south struggled in poverty. Most of the members of Ruan Xian's branch of the clan lived on the south side of the road. Many of them were officials, but being honest and incorruptible, they were not that rich. Back then, it was the custom in the Central Plains region on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month for people to hang their clothing out in the sun. This, it was believed, would protect the clothing from being damaged by worms or going mouldy. The history of the Jin dynasty recounts how one year on the seventh of the seventh, all the families on the north side of the road hung clothing out in the sun. Their clothes were made of silk and looked gorgeous. Ruan Jian, who lived south of the road, erected a line of poles, and from them he hung his breeches made of coarse cloth. Dubi Kun is a very long dress. In the past, only the wearer of the dress could wear such a dress. So, the members of the Ming family also wear such a 以表示洒脱，不拘礼俗。阮咸的这一举动，自然招来北阮族人的谴责，因为北阮都很富有，他们认为这一举动给这个家族出了丑。阮咸 rejected such criticism. He argued that everyone else had hung clothing out in the sun, and he had simply observed the custom. The oldest of the seven sages of the bamboo grove was Shan Tao. When he first joined the group, he was already 43. Shan Tao was also known as Zhu Yuan and was a native of Wuzhou in Hunan province. The history of the Jin dynasty describes him as a hermit and Taoist. In the 5th century collection of short stories called the Shi Shuo Xin Yu, or New Account of Tales of the World, it is said of Shan Tao, he never read Lao Tzu or Zhuangzi, However, when people discussed them, he found that he agreed with all that they said. Like Ruanji, Shantao had, before joining the group in the bamboo grove, been a government official. Shantao was politically astute, and hearing that Sima Yi was claiming to be too ill to attend court, 
he sensed that a major political upheaval was imminent. Not long afterwards, Shantou and a companion named Xu Jian left the capital on business. But Xu Jian's answer only angered Shan Tao. He shouted, Brother Xu, do you think you can ever be safe caught among a stampede of galloping horses? Afterwards, Shan Tao retired to his home village. The year was 248, the ninth year of the reign of Cao Feng, Emperor of Cao Wei. A bamboo grove offered them a refuge from the intrigues at court. Taoist philosophy and music and wine offer them an escape from the rigid social conventions prescribed by Confucius. But try as they might, the seven sages of the bamboo grove couldn't always remain immune to events in the outside world. <laughs> 